Shah Jahan, along with his beloved wife, Mumtaz Mahal, had 14 children. Among them, few survived. Jahanara Begum was the eldest of all the children, followed by Tarashiku, Shah Shuja, Roshanara, Aurangzeb, Murad Baksh, and Gohar Begum. Rest did not survive. Darashiku was a liberal minded, unorthodox Muslim, as opposed to the orthodox Aurangzeb. He was a great patron of art. He was more inclined to philosophy, mysticism, rather than military pursuits. We can say that his love for art was more than the crown. But being in the wrong shoe, he had to prove himself as a prince, and to acquire the throne, he had to fight many battles, and in the last battle, he lost his life. During the lifetime of his mother, Mumtaz Mahal, Dara Shigo was betrothed to his half-cousin. Princess Nadira Banu Begum, the daughter of his paternal uncle Sultan Parvez Mirza. He married her on 1st February 1633 at Agra with a lot of pomp, show, grandeur. A lot of money was spent on this. By all accounts, Dara and Nadira were devoted to each other, and Dara's love for Nadira was so profound that unlike the usual practice of polygamy prevalent at that time, he never contracted any other marriage. The imperial couple had seven children together, with two sons, Suleiman Shiko and Sipir Shiko, and a daughter, Janazeb Banu Begum, surviving to play important roles in future events. Tarashiko was a great patron of art. He loved and spoke about religion and art. A great patron of art, but at the same time loved and amused many other things apart from art. He gave a beautiful album, which is now famous as the Dara Shiku album, to Nadira Begum. This album was an intimate uh, dearest uh, affair and he wrote and presented it as the dearest intimate friend to Nadira in 1641. Tara's love for him, for his beautiful wife, can be seen in the beautiful pictures portrayed in the album, which shows everything from the beginning till the end of his love. Darashiko and Aurangzeb were both brothers. But Shah Jahan had an inclination towards Dara. And that inclination, that love, separated and created a crack between both the brothers. Shah Jahan assumed that Darashiko is going to be his heir to the throne after his death and therefore he gave many big titles to Daratishiko. Aurangzeb was always pinched by this behavior. And there is one more very interesting fact that at the time of Jahangir and when Shah Jahan revolted against Jahangir he wanted two of his children to be kept at his court while Shah Jahan and Mumtaz Mahal were away. And Aurangzeb and Dara Shiku were kept in the court of Jahangir without his parents. There in the court, in the palace, Aurangzeb was a staunch Muslim. He was taunted and many times pinched, hurted 
and taunted by the eunuchs of the palace. Especially Noor Jahan's eunuchs troubled him a lot. To escape those troubles, he it was attached more towards Quran and therefore he had a hatred towards many things and one of his hatred was the Rashiko. Shah Jahan, in bodily weakness and desirous of pleasing Dara, transferred all his powers and dignity to his beloved son. It was also another move to avoid all the thing that threatened him. On an oppressive day in September 1657, Shah Jahan falls seriously ill and he is not able to appear in front of his courtiers as well as at the Charoka of Kilai Mubarak at Shah Janabad for a very long time. It led to suspicion among his courtiers. It was also an act to avoid any confusion among his people. Tarashiko and Jahanara are constantly in coordination with Shah Jahan. Dara did not allow anybody to enter the palace and meet the king, nor he wanted any information to be passed on to his brothers. But he was very wrong. He had his younger sister, Roshanara Begum, inside the palace. Though she did not have any significant role till now, but she wanted to rise from the shadows of his elder son. And therefore, Roshanara, in an attempt to come out of her sister's shadow, starts supporting her brother Aurangzeb. And she passes on all the important message from the palace to her brother. The prince Darashiku went to take leave of the king, his father Shah Jahan, and of Begum Sahiba, his sister, who at that time were living in the port of Agra. On beholding the sun, they melted into floods of tears. The king began to speak and thus addressed Dara, Get us triumphed over the rebels and traitors. Having bade farewell to his father, Dara soon appeared in the army. But the march could not be taken that very day. So we can understand how painful it was for the father, son and the sister to bade farewell. Not to see again, not to be loved, not to be together once again. Shah Jahan's four sons played a vital role in the struggle of the throne. Shah Jahan wanted Dara Shiko to take up the crown, but Aurangzeb wanted to become the king, and therefore all the four had their own strategy. Murad Baksh joined with Aurangzeb. He was promised by Aurangzeb that he will be crowned the Mughal emperor after the win. But fate had something else. Murad Baksh was executed by Aurangzeb after the battle was won against Darashiku. <coughs> Shah Shuja, on the other hand, promised 
Darashiku that he will be coming with his army to provide help and assistance in the war struggle against Aurangzeb. But here again, fate had something else to say. Darashiko lost the battle and Shah Shuja was removed altogether. Darashiko marched on for four days until he reached the bank of the river Chambal where there was a village called Tholpur. The powerful army of Darashiko took a position on this ground and entrenched the crossing placing its pieces of artillery to cover the most exposed points and defending from any attack from the enemy. He awaited the enemy who was already near, being fully prepared and in every way desirous of finding himself engaged in battle, he did not march forward because Dara was pretty sure about certain things. He was sure that Sultan Suleiman Suko and his foes who could not be very long from coming here. Even if they were delayed, he was sure that the army would never risk a crossing at this place, which was well occupied and fortified. Dara's design was to continue his advance until he had closed with Aurangzeb and could attack him in person. But owing to the difficulties of the ground and to the fatigue that overcame him, he made a short halt. Now, this short halt could have been a real big hindrance to his will. Had he continued his progress, he would have made it. He would have taken the victory on his strike. But that could not be done. Aurangzeb could have made no resistance with the small force left around him. For with a few men, it was not possible to rebel his enemies' victorious fighters full of bravery and strength. Although Darashiko was the most powerful man in the Mughal Empire, but his father Shah Jahan knew better than Darashiko. He knew that Darashiko had little about the war and military combat skills. Darashiko was loosely knit in artillery skills and therefore his army finally crumbled during the final stages of war in Samugra. Murad Baksh was very successful in killing the horse of Darashiko and despite being surrounded by Rajputs and Deccan Sohars, Murad Baksh managed to protect himself. He was also known to have killed Raja Rotella through his artillery skill. When the battle ended, Darashiko and Khalilullah Khan fled towards Suleiman Shiko, and Dara was in a pitiful state. Aurangzeb was declared the new Mughal emperor. Aurangzeb then marched towards Agra and stopped the water supply, which finally made his father Shah Jahan to surrender. Shah Jahan was soon imprisoned in Agra for. Later, Khalilullah Khan sworn an oath of alliance with Aurangzeb. Eventually, both Darashiko and Suleiman Shiko was captured by the Afghan Malik Jiwa Khan and handed over to Aurangzeb. Darashiko was paraded through the streets of Agra and later declared a non-Muslim during a campaign by Aurangzeb. He was later executed along with his son, Suleiman Shiko. 
However, Aurangzeb's troubles ended until 1659, where another ferocious battle was fought with Shuja, his another brother, in the Battle of Kajma. The miserable and unfortunate Dara, by a hurried flight, reached the gates of Agra fortress at nine o'clock at night and sought some repose. But he did not want to enter, fearing that Aurangzeb might invest it and thus prevent his exile and exit, when he would fall a prisoner and would be abandoned by everyone. At the same time, he was greatly ashamed at appearing before his father, who loved him so much. Thus, the unhappy Dara was forced, after sizing what horses there was in the royal stables, to resume his march and make for Lahore. After the defeat, Dara Shikoh retreated from Agra to Delhi, then to Lahore. Aurangzeb's secret plan was to win over Raja Champat, to whom he sent valuable presents, proposing for him high rewards and making him liberal offers. He asked the Raja to allow him to pass through his territories in order to get across the river by another unknown fort situated 12 leagues from him. These demands were conceded by Raja Champa and Aurangzeb and his soldiers who were much fatigued, tired, scattered, lying about on the river bank. But the traitor Khalilullah Khan, having heard that Dara had decided to make this attempt, came to him and said that it was advisable to not start the war right now. Dara Shiko, on holding his great confusion and flight, fell into deep thoughts. He wondered what really happened, and now he understood his mistake and the plot laid for him by Khalilullah Khan. He repented and regretted for the fault that he had committed, but the time is gone full of wrath and raging. He asked where was the traitor Khalilullah Khan. Khalilullah Khan had already fled the sea, creating chaos and confusion on the battleground, leaving the poor Darashiko on his fate. Dara's family was very much agitated and disturbed with the presence of Jawan Khan. His wife, daughter, and his young son, Sipa Shiko, fell at his feet, pleading with tears in their eyes to turn him aside from Jawan Khan. The Pathan, they observed, was notoriously a robber and a rebel, and to place confidence in such a character was at once to rush into destruction. They pleaded again and again. They wanted that Darashiku should not follow what Jawan Khan was telling him. The traitor Khalilullah Khan persuaded the young prince to come down from his horse. He deceived him. He told Darashiku that let's go at once and size Aurangzeb because this can be done right now without any difficulty. Let your prince be pleased to descend from your elephant and mount a horse. Poor Dara, without fully considering what he was doing and what would follow when he was no longer to be seen on his elephant, towards which all turned their gaze, but relying on the soft words of that cunning Kalevala Khan by which he allowed himself to be persuaded and deceived. And he took the advice as it appeared to him that what had been said was very true. He came down from his elephant and this was as if he had quitted victory. For the soldiers and commanders 
who in the midst of the war kept an eye on Dara, not seeing him on his elephant, assumed that he had already been killed. He is dead and for this reason they were thrown into a great confusion. Dorashiko's family, agitated by the dismal forebonding, employed every entreaty to prevent Dara from venturing in Jawan Khan's presence. His wife, daughter, and his young son, Sipa Shiko, fell at his feet, endeavoring with tears in their eyes to turn him aside from his plan. The Pathan, Jawan Khan, they observed were notorious a robber and a rebel and to place confidence in him was just creating your own pit and falling into destruction but darashiko was not ready to be persuaded he was not ready to listen to them and carried on in believing jawan khan darashiko trusted jawan khan and believed in him he followed the instructions of Jawan Khan, but Jawan Khan betrayed Darashiko. Jawan Khan, after betraying Darashiko, proceeded with his prisoner first to Lahore, Lahore and then afterwards to Delhi. When the unhappy prince was brought to the gates of Delhi, it became a question with Aurangzeb whether, if conducting him to the fortress of Gwalior, he should be made to pass through the capital. It was the opinion of some courtiers that this was by all means to be avoided because not only such an exhibition be derogatory to the royal family but it might become a signal of revolt and the rescue of Dara might be successfully attempted. Others maintained that he should be seen and paraded in the city, that it is necessary to tell the people that it was and it will be the plight of anyone who revolted against Aurangzeb. The pursuit of the two princes continued. Shah Shuja was defeated at the Battle of Khajwa in January 1659 and eventually disappeared into Arakan, never to be heard again. But Darashiko was very unfortunate. He was pursued westward by the imperial force and suffered excessive defeats until he was left with a small contingent. He was left alone with his family. He did not have anybody to trust. He could not trust that because all betrayed him. Finally, in June 1659, in Sindh, the Zamedar of Dadar Malik Juwan treacherously captured him and handed him over to Aurangzeb's general. A few days before this, confident that he had vandalized his enemies, Aurangzeb celebrated a second coronation ceremony. This was held in the Diwan-e-Khas-o-Am on 15th June 1659, where Aurangzeb sat on the famous peacock throne, adored with fabulous jewels that had been commissioned by his father Shah Jahan. Darashiko and his son Sipe Shuko were brought to Delhi in September and were subjected to public humiliation on the orders of the Emperor Aurangzeb. Despite this public opinion in Delhi, Aurangzeb remained firm in his determination to wipe out all his brothers. Meanwhile, Legal opinions were obtained that justified his being put to death on charges of apostasy and herseri. Aurangzeb viewed the matter in the same light and wanted Darashuko to be executed. The Richard prisoner was therefore secured on an elephant with his young son, Sipa Shiko, placed at his side and behind him. Instead of the executioner was seated Bahadur Khan. Shah Jahan 
and Jahanara were completely devastated and depressed after the loss of battle by Darashiko. Shah Jahan called Aurangzeb to his palace to crown him the king. But Roshanara prevented Aurangzeb from going to the palace. She told him that it is just a, a plot by Shah Jahan to kill Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb understood the plan and did not go to the palace. Instead, then Jahanara thought of meeting Aurangzeb. When Jahanara reaches Aurangzeb's private apartments, she is not greeted with the customary great signs of respect that she usually gets. Instead, she is taken to Aurangzeb's Zanana Khana, where she meets with her brother privately. This is the first time that Jahanara has had to ask anything from Aurangzeb, because it was always the other way round. For decades, Aurangzeb has laid his many humiliations and slights in front of her for her sympathy and for validation. Now Jahanara appears before her brother, pleading, asking and begging for the most precious thing of her life, the life of Darashiku and the honor of her father. But she forgot that she is in the court of Aurangzeb, the newly crowned king of India. The charge of this atrocious murder was entrusted to the slave of the name of Nazar, who had been educated by Shah Jahan, but experienced some ill treatment from Darashiko. Darashiko was apprehensive that poison would be administered to him, but he was employed with Sipashiko in boiling lentil Nazir and four other ruffians entered Dara's apartment. He shouted. Dara called out his son. My dear son, these men are come to murder us. They have come to tear us into pieces. He thus sized a small kitchen knife the only weapon Dara had in his possession at that time. One of the murderers, having secured Sipa Shiko and the rest, pounced upon Dara Shiko. They threw him down, while the other three held Dara Shiko. Nazir decaptivated Dara Shiko his poor wretched victim. The head was instantly carried to Aurangzeb, who commanded that it should be placed in a dish and the water should be brought along with that. The blood was then washed from the face and when it could no longer be doubted that it was indeed the head of Dara Shiko, he shed tears and said, Eh Buck, O oh, treacherous one, let this shocking sight no more offend my eyes but take away the head and let it be buried in Humayun's tomb. One of the dark stories of history is Darashiko's death. 
According to Nicola Manusi, the Italian traveller who worked in the Mughal court has written down the details of Dara Shikoh's death. According to him, upon Dara's capture, Aurangzeb ordered his men to have his head brought up to him and he inspected it thoroughly to ensure that it was indeed Dara. He then further mutilated the head with his sword three times. Now, uh, this theory by Nicola Manusi, uh, we cannot completely believe on this because Manusi at that time was in southern part of India. And Bernier, in his uh, documentation, he did not mention that Dara Shiko was beheaded. So, um, and uh, nowhere it is written that his head was buried somewhere else in Taj Mahal and his body. Uh, was taken and buried in Humayun's tomb. So it is just uh, the traveler that he wrote that his head was further mutilated by Aurangzeb. After which he ordered the head to be put in a box and presented to his ailing father Shah Jahan with a, kill, uh, with a clear instructions to be delivered only when the old king sat for his dinner in his prison. Now this was done uh, in accordance to what Aurangzeb told the guards. The guards were also instructed to inform Shah Jahan that King Aurangzeb, your son, sends this plate to let him, that is Shah Jahan, see that he does not forget him. That is, this is a favor done to Shah Jahan to present the son's head to him he had love and faith. Shah Jahan instantly became very unhappy and he was troubled. He fell down from the seat from where he was having his food and shouted. Blessed be God that my son still remembers me. Upon opening the box, Shah Jahan became horrified, fell unconscious, and for days he could not get back. Now, there is a persistent controversy regarding where Dara Shiko was buried. Because nothing is written on the tombs. According to Brumi and Manucci, he was buried in Humayun's tomb. But where in Humayun's tomb? That could not be registered for long. But after going through a lot of documentations, we find that Dara's body was buried along with Daniel and Murad. No matter how the Mughals were and what they did to capture the throne, but this character Dara Shiku always fascinated me and pleaded my heart to find what exactly happened with him. Maybe he's in the wrong shoe. He was a patron of art. He loved paintings, drawings and many other forms of art. But his fate ended him thank you for watching this please subscribe my channel donna john thank you